Okay, good morning and welcome to Daily 3D Revolve. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Design Spark Mechanical. I'm not going to be making anything specific. I'm just going to be going over some of the tools, some of the drawing tools, uh, some of the settings, and some of the things that you can change while in the, while you're in Design Spark. Okay, we'll go ahead and go to File, create a new design, and we'll change it to Plan View. Okay, I'm going to go over the basic, up here there's a few tabs, so we're going to go over the tools one by one, try to make this quick. This is the line tool, um, pretty much lets you draw lines. Okay, and then um, next tool over is uh, going to be a rec rectangle tool, pretty much do just what we did up there on the end. A couple of clicks instead of four. Okay, and now the next tool over is going to be our circle tool. Uh, that will let us draw a circle. <coughs> um, next tool over is called the tangent arc. Uh, so to demonstrate that, I'll click on this. We'll say move. We'll create a pattern, and we'll drag this down. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. So the tangent arc lets you draw a uh, basically a curved line from any tangent point on a circle to the other tangent spot on the circle. Okay, this is a this is useful if you want to make um, stuff like slots. Uh, let's go here. So you basically you could draw tangent from there to there you got kind of a little hot dog shape so that's the that's the spline that's the tangent arc so yeah so basically if you were going to do a uh, hot dog shape or a slot you would have be able to use that tool okay the next one is uh, spline uh, spline basically lets you draw <clears throat> an unusual curve point at a time. Okay, uh, that's the spline. Uh, this next one is create rounded corners. You've all, if you watch my videos, you've all seen me use that before. It's one click, two clicks, and drag. You've got yourself a corner. Um, this is the uh, create corner. This is useful if you have two lines and they're not touching. Give you an example right here. These two aren't touching. Go ahead and use that, that tool there. Click on one line and then click on the other line. It, it, it connects them. <clears throat> Okay, I'm not going to get into this too much. This is uh, if you want to create geometry based on equations, mathematical calculations, you can use that. Okay, this next tool here. Oops, not sure what I did here. Put that back where it belongs. Hmm. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the next tool. Uh, let's see, we're going over this one, equations. That's a tangent line, basically the same thing. Goes from a tangent point to another tangent point. Okay, this is a three-point rectangle. It basically lets you draw a rectangle with one, two, three points. Okay, this is the same thing. This is a three-point circle. Let you do the same thing one, two, and then you can specify. You want to go over here, you want to go to the right or the left, you want to go top bottom, you can do that. This tool here is the three point arch. So I use this quite a bit. This is uh, one point, two points, three points. Got yourself a circle or a half rounded arc. Uh, this is points. I won't go really go into that, but you can click points on uh, your thing and then you can draw lines from it and stuff. 
This is a useful feature. I use this quite a bit. This is offset. Let's you click offset a certain distance, and then you got another line. This is trim, trim away. Also useful. Let's you trim away any part of a line. Okay. This is a construction line. These are useful. If you started drawing, you could draw a construction line. If you were going to do uh, draw concentric parts, you could draw uh, half on the left side, set it up as a mirror, and then the other half will draw over there. Example like this. Okay, and then you only have to draw the one side. Okay, that's a construction line. Okay, these are going to be uh, ellipse. Ellipse, you start off two clicks and then you specify your diameter. This is a hexagon or polygon tool. Same thing there, you can specify, uh, say we wanted 0.5. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Try it again. Let's click drag out 0.5, and then you could say tab. Tab will go to the next one. You could say four sides. That'll get you a square, six side, eight side. Okay, that's that tool. Um, this one is the sweep arc. Uh, this is useful. You could go basically drag out to the, the diameter that you want. And then you could sweep it over. <clears throat> okay, I um, won't go over that one. I don't use that one too often. This is a split curve. This is interesting if you want to do a <clears throat> if you wanted to cut away a section in a in a drawing. You could do it, just click on it. Then you can remove that piece. So that's handy to have. Um, obviously, the modes this is your sketch mode, which we're drawing in now. Then you have a, a, a section mode. Um, then you have your uh, your 3D mode is for when you want to extrude and stuff. Okay, this is pull. This is going to pull an object or cut an object. This is move. Click on move, and then you click on an object that you want to move, and then this will move it. Okay. Um, this is fill. <clears throat> One of these objects, if you wanted to fill it, you just go ahead and fill, and then it creates basically a solid image that's ready to be extruded. Uh, I think I've gone over this before, loft. I'll demonstrate the go ahead and spin this. Loft is uh, basically copy paste this and we'll move. Loft lets you uh, join two shapes together so we would click the loft or the blend, actually, I'd say it is blend. And then we say one, hold down the control key, and then click the green check. we got a lofted part. Combine lets you uh, take two pieces, uh, two um, drawings or parts, and combine them together. Separate does the same, it splits them. Okay, this here uh, is a plane, lets you add a plane. Um, not really sure what those do. This adds primitives. This is a cylinder, a sphere. This is a, basically a loft or shell command. And the way that works is if you extruded this piece here, pull, um, you would go click on this shell and it will shell apart for you, make it hollow. File. This is to import um, stuff into uh, Design Spark Mechanical. Like I use this a lot if I'm going to import text or if I'm going to import a logo that I recreated. Um, import PCB. 
That's if you do electrical circuit boards, you can do that. Um, this command here basically gives you uh, dimensions. Like that's, you know, it tells you how far the part is, 0.725 wide, 0.5 high. I'll do that. Okay, so now we'll, we'll go over some of the other features, other tools. You have display up here, and what display does is you could change the color, like if I wanted to change this part. Oops, I'm still in the inches. Let's go back to uh, display, hit our selector, go to display, click on this. Basically, uh, if you didn't want this green color, you could go ahead and change it to another color. Uh, this is the thickness of the lines. These lines here make them over here is thin. Drag to the left, it's thicker. Uh, this graphics under here, this is the different wireframe. Obviously, it's wireframe. Um, shaded is shaded. Uh, enhanced shaded is a little bit better. Um, these are really handy. Like if you wanted to draw it with four views, like in Rhino, you can go ahead and say, click on split and say four viewports. And then you could change these around. Like right now, this is top, this is perspective, this is front, and this is right. It's really handy. This is really a good way to get used to uh, or start off drafting uh, because you can actually see where things are in relationship to the drawing or the part. And then if you want to go back, you just click split and say one viewport. So that's that one. So we'll go back to design. I think I covered most of this. So these are all your views. Um, you got isometric view. You have a uh, top view. You have the uh, bottom view. You have your right view. Front view back view, and then uh, go back to top. Okay, those are views. This is uh, spin, lets you click on the drawing and spin it. I typically use that before I extrude a part. Pan, lets you move the part to the left, to the right, up or down. Zoom, lets you click and zoom either out or in on a part. Okay, that's that stuff. Cover this stuff. Cover the most of these. Cover the fill. Cover the uh, blend. The combined um, measuring tool. Okay, now under the display, covered most of this stuff. The graphics. Now your measurements. This is pretty handy because you can go mass properties, and anytime you click on a face, it will basically tell you the information. If you're an engineer or you're in school for engineer training. This has a lot of valuable information. Okay, that's that. I'm um, not gonna cover too much stuff up. This is also a draft. That's also an interesting information. Uh, okay, so that's handy to have and then um, Let's go back to um, design. All right, so we covered most of this. This 3D, I'm not going to go too much into this, but 3D models, you click here. Uh, design Spark Mechanical has a list of models that are uh, fully already put together and everything that you can buy. Um, bill of materials, this is, uh, you know, lets you, uh, you know, basically has a list of if you're drawing up. If you're drawing a part, assembled part, you can basically have all the materials that you've used in the part. Um, let's see what else. Display. Okay, that's basically it. And then if you go, the only other thing I wanted to go over with you is if you go to File, your Design Spark options. This is this is handy because uh, under Popular, uh, you have rendering quality. You can uh, put that up higher. Appearance, you can make it look like different, a different uh, space claim. 
or a different program. You have selections. Uh, your hit radius default is five pixels. You could bump that up to 10 or 15. Uh, that's your snap. You can uh, click on you can click on and enable all of these points, or you can take them off, whichever ones you don't want to use. Your units. You basically have two types of units in Design Sparks. You have imperial, which is inches, and you have metric, which is millimeters. So um, then your uh, advanced don't really change much in here. Uh, file options. Uh, you got a lot of these different file options. And what the only one that I usually change is the STL. And STL, if you go to STL under file options and come down here, this is the resolution. So you want to make sure that it's on fine. And if you're doing uh, uh, something for a customer and they have specific resolution, then you want to uh, uh, click on custom. This allows you to change the, your uh, deviation and your angle. So uh, you see here, if I go to course, uh, the deviation is way over here and the angle is way over here. So this is going to be kind of a rough copy. And then medium, the higher up you go, the more they come this way. And then fine is right here. I leave it out fine. That's uh, pretty good for uh, all the work that you want to do print-wise. Support files. This just basically uh, lets you specify how often you want to back up your computer, where you want the backup location to go, and you, how long you want to keep your files for. This is a five days, 15 minute backup, and this goes to my uh, app data folder. Okay, that's going to um, end the tutorial. I uh, didn't really make anything uh, interesting as far as parts go, but hopefully I went over everything uh, that somebody that's just starting off maybe using Design Sparks will find useful. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching the video, and I thank you for watching.